welcome to the first Kill It With Fire 2 Dev Diary. So today's Dev Diary, we're gonna cover who makes Kill It With Fire 2, uh, why Kill It With Fire 2 is happening, uh, the Kill It With Fire 2 design ethos and philosophy, the game's hub and spoke system. Uh, we're gonna talk about multiplayer, and also we're gonna talk about a roadmap for early access. So let's get started. First up is the team. So first and foremost, uh, I'm Casey. Casey Donellan of Casey Donellan Games, LLC. Uh, I'm the guy who came up with the original idea for Kill With Fire, made the first game, and now I'm working on Kill With Fire 2. I'm the only person that's like working on the game full time, uh, all the time. So I write all the code, I design all the levels, uh, come up with all the spiders and all the objectives and just generally like plan what's gonna be in the game and execute on it. However, I definitely can't do it all by myself. So uh, I have like a handful of contractors that help me out. For example, uh, Trevor Black writes all the music. Miles Luna does all of like the, the writing for the game and some voice acting and, and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, mostly it's like stuff that uh, either I just can't do it all or I'm not very good at or stuff that I could like break off and just give to somebody else to lighten my my own workload. Check out the credits in the game for like a, a full list of everybody. And we'll probably be talking about some more people in future dev diaries as well. Also, there's Tiny Build. Uh, Tiny Build is my publisher and they do stuff like help me out with uh, QA testing, localization. They do the marketing, they make all the trailers and uh, just all kinds of stuff. So they're, you know, be much, much harder to do any of this without Tiny Build. So a big thank you to them. So let's talk about why Kill It With Fire 2. Why did we make this game? Well, definitely the number one reason is uh, just the fans wanted it. Going and reading Steam reviews and what people say on Discord, uh, there was just a huge demand for Kill It With Fire 2. Pe people were really excited about the first game and they, they wanted more spider exterminating action. It's kind of an, an amalgam of a few things, uh, a bunch of leftover ideas that didn't quite make it into Kill It With Fire 1, and then a bunch of ideas that I had after releasing Kill It With Fire 1 of just, you know, before you make a game and after you make a game, you, you kind of think about it in different ways and you think about, you have a whole different picture of like what ideas would be a good fit for a game. Uh, and so after releasing Kill It With Fire 1, you know, there was kind of a whole new set of ideas of like, ah, oh, this would be really cool. Uh, this would be like a, a neat thing to put in a Kill With Fire game. And kind of once I had enough of those ideas and thought of a interesting story to kind of encapsulate everything, I said, you know, let, hey, let's let's do this. Let's do Kill With Fire 2. Push a little bit more on the story. This was kind of like a, a little bit of a do-over from the first game in terms of story. You know, the first Kill With Fire didn't really have a story. The, what story it did have was kind of like tacked on uh, in the Omega Files update. And so this was a chance to really like focus harder on, on that part of the game and use it as a platform. Tell an interesting story, and I think some interesting ways. Um, so we'll get more into that. Design ethos of Kill It With Fire 2 um, is very different actually from Kill It With Fire 1. Uh, so a little bit of spoilers here for the first game. Um, Kill It With Fire 1 is all about escalation. So. You start out, you know, just like in a couple of rooms fighting against like regular spiders. Uh, but the game keeps introducing new and crazy types of spiders and it keeps, more importantly, giving you crazier and crazier and more and more destructive weapons uh, to kill the spiders. But also, you know, part of the joke is you're going to end up destroying everything around you. And that escalates and escalates to the point where you set off uh, an atomic bomb and really destroy everything around you. So you can only escalate so far though. And uh, could I think of some things that would escalate further than an atomic bomb? Yes, but I'm not sure that it would be very meaningful from like a game design and a player experience point of view. So rather than escalating things further, and Kill It With Fire 2, we're gonna go broader. That is best represented in the game's various dimensions. So in Kill It With Fire 2, you are hopping between different dimensions that have all been overrun by spiders. And each dimension is a pretty unique experience from other dimensions. So it, like on the surface, yes, they are different settings. 
Uh, so you've got, you know, a haunted house or a spider city. But more than that, each different dimension is bringing like new mechanics. So new mechanics in terms of gameplay challenges, that's probably where it's like most obvious, but also different sets of weapons, different systems like potion making system. And of course, you know, different types of spiders, a whole different sets of audio logs that are telling a unique story that's specific to that dimension. Uh, and sometimes even the format of that story is different. And then even the music is different, you know? You would think that would kind of be a given, but like the, the first Kill of Fire, we may do with like three or four minutes of music for the whole game. I think that Kill of Fire 2 has something more like 25 or 30 minutes of music, huge amount more music compared to the first Kill of Fire. So yeah, it, it's, it's uh, more about going broader and having a much bigger variety of stuff happening than in the first Kill of Fire. We have all of these different dimensions uh, and they are like the spokes to that surround the hub. And the hub is the Vindicator. Um, the Vindicator is a spaceship that has the ability to open portals to different dimensions. Um, and so in Kill of the Fire 2, the expectation is that as a player, you're going to be spending time hopping back and forth between these different dimensions. Killing spiders, completing objectives, collecting compound X. Um, personally, I find that very satisfying. I, I think that's a really fun way to play the game, and it seems like from reading a lot of reviews and hearing from players who played the first game, that's kind of how people played the first Kill of the Fire. Uh, even though you had to like, you know, select the level from the menu, and you were just looking on menus to check everything off, a lot of people really loved that type of gameplay. And so Kill it with Fire 2, you know, we're like, we're formalizing that a lot more. We're saying like, you know, th this actually really is the way you're supposed to play Kill with Fire, is checking off all these boxes. Now that said, you can still play the game straight through. You don't have to, you know, go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Uh, as long as you're like collecting a modest amount of compound decks in each level, I don't think you even have to go back to another level twice, with the exception of going back to the Vindicator just to open another level. So for people that want a more straightforward experience, that is still there for you. But for what I expect to be a majority of players, that more like sprawling hub and spoke experience is there for you. And there's a lot of gameplay mechanics there to kind of support and reinforce that. We'll talk about some examples of that. So, you know, a simple one is the morph spiders. Uh, we'll get into like what morph spiders do later in probably another dev diary, but an important thing to know about morph spiders is that unlike just about every other spider in Kill with Fire, when you kill a morph spider, it's dead forever. Uh, there is a specific amount of them in each level. You know, you can actually go through and kill all of the morph spiders in the whole game. And so on the Vindicator, there's some objectives to, you know, kill 25 morph spiders, kill 50 morph spiders, and then there is an achievement to kill all of the morph spiders. So, and then each uh, level tells you how many morph spiders are left in that level. And so this is kind of like, you know, encouraging you to keep track of like, okay, I need to do this in this level, I need to do that in that level. Um, it kind of keep you bouncing around between the different levels. Uh, so another example of this that's uh, a little bit more involved is the potion system. So in Artois Manor, there's a cauldron where you can brew potions, but, the recipes for each potion uh, are hidden in all the different levels. So each level has its own recipe. So um, you might stumble upon a new recipe and take a screenshot of it or, or take a picture, write, write it down even. Uh, and then you'll go back to the level with the cauldron and brew that potion and say, oh, well, you know, this actually would really help me in that other level. Uh, it would help me in this challenge that I had a hard time doing. Um, and so, you know, these are mechanics that are really encouraging you to like explore back and forth and like, you know, try new abilities on levels that you've already been to and stuff like that. The last example I'll talk about is the weapon upgrade system. So in Kill the Fire 2, you can upgrade your weapons. A, a lot of the time that involves adding an alt fire ability to weapons. But in order to do that, you need to meet a proficiency requirement. Uh, and what that means is the, the game is gonna tell you like, oh, kill this amount of spiders with this weapon, or like do this thing X number of times. 
And so I might say, like, you know, kill uh, 10 web spiders with the laser gun. And you say, oh, you know what? Uh, Archon Manor, that has a lot of web spiders. Uh, but I didn't have the laser gun when I unlocked that. So I'm going to I'm gonna load that level up and go hunt the web spiders with the gun. And oh, yeah, now I have the kills and then I'll go upgrade it. Oh, now I have this new ability. And it, you know, keeps going and you just keep keep getting more and more weapon upgrades and more and more stuff to do. So yeah, that's, uh, it's just uh, trying to think of as many mechanics and things as I can to keep players, you know, coming back and, and revisiting levels and seeing, seeing like content in new life. Okay, so enough about that. Let's talk multiplayer. So, Kill with Fire 2, one of the huge pillars of the game is multiplayer. You know, what, why did we do multiplayer? Well, you guessed it, because people really wanted multiplayer. Uh, a huge amount of comments for the first game. We're just talking about, we want multiplayer. We Specifically, we want to be able to play as a spider. Uh, so a lot of people had this idea, you know, independently of they want some people to be able to play as exterminators and some people to be able to play as spiders. And so uh, I have created that in a mode that I'm calling Spider Hunt. So in this mode, you've got uh, up to eight players, some of them exterminators, some of them spiders. The spiders, your only goal is just to survive until the time limit is up. The exterminators, on the other hand, uh, you've got to go out, you've got to find weapons, and of course you've got to kill the spiders. But you can only cause a certain amount of collateral damage. If you cause too much, you'll get fired. That said, you can cause quite a bit. I mean, you know, it's still kill with fire we're talking about. Um, so that's out, that's in the demo. Uh, we did a, a play test a few months ago that featured that mode also. People seem to really like it. I, I think it's a lot of fun myself. Um, and I'm gonna be continuing to add new maps to that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the other form of multiplayer is campaign co-op. So with the exception of the tutorial at the beginning of the game, to play the entire campaign in Kill with Fire 2 uh, co-op with your friends. And I think that a lot of people are really gonna enjoy that. So yeah, um, one thing I also wanted to say about multiplayer is that multiplayer is like super hard to make, actually. Uh, you know, I've, I've actually, in my career, I've worked on a number of multiplayer games. I, I know this, uh, <laughs> I should have known better uh, that, you know, it would, it would take, it would add an enormous amount of complexity uh, to the game. So if you've been wondering, like, well, why is it taking so long for Kill with Fire 2 to come out? Multiplayer is a big part of that reason. I, I pretty much had to, like, bust the whole code base back to, like, the beginning to to add in the multiplayer functionality. So the other, one, the other reason it's taking so long is uh, my wife and I actually had a baby, uh, like, right, right before I started development on Kill with Fire 2. And we moved across the country as well. So, you know, Definitely some additional complexity in my life. Uh, see, see if you can spot my daughter. She, she's in the game somewhere. Let me know if you if you think you've seen her. So speaking of time and how long it takes to make a game, original release of Kill with Fire 2 is going to be in early access on Steam. Let's talk about what's going to be in that early access release and what isn't going to be. So the early access release is going to include four levels. You may say, yeah, that does not seem like very many levels. Uh, the first game had eight levels. Well, if you've played the demo, you've already seen these levels are a lot bigger than the levels in Kill the Fire 1. They're bigger in terms of like square footage, but they're also bigger in terms of you just have a lot more that you can do in a level. Um, there's a lot more systems, there's a lot more mechanics, there's more challenges. Even though it only has four levels, I think that like, you know, we're looking at a similar size game just in the original early access release. And then additionally, there's gonna be Spider Hunt with three Spider Hunt maps. Beyond early access, uh, there's gonna be three big updates that each add a level. I'm not gonna tell you what levels they are, but if you look, there's a, a part in the, the Vindicator, the hub level, uh, where you can probably guess uh, some information about the levels that are coming. So there's gonna be three big updates, one for each of these levels, and then the game will have its full release. Uh, and I would like to do some kind of a big community event again, like we did for the anniversary update of Kill with Fire 1 when the when the full release happens. Uh, additionally, at some point along the way, I'm not sure exactly when, I would like to add in the house from Kill with Fire 1 as a spider hunt map. I think, I think you guys would really like that. And I think that would just be like a big, 
just a big fun thing to do for the community um, to be able to, to play in that house again, but in Guild of Fire 2. So yeah, uh, after all of that happens, then I'm gonna start porting the game to consoles and eventually it will come out on consoles as well. So yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty much it for Dev Diary number one. If you, uh, depending on when you're watching this, I guess, uh, you should try the demo if you haven't already and make sure you wishlist the game. Or if you're watching this game or this uh, Dev Diary like way in the future, go ahead and buy the game. I'm sure it's, it's came out really super good. Uh, <laughs> and uh, lastly, uh, if you haven't already, check out the Kill It With Fire Discord server. There's an awesome community on there. All right, well, thanks a lot. Uh, again, this was Casey Donellan, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.